Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Crime Weekly News. I'm Derek Lavasser. And I'm Stephanie Harlow. And tonight we're going to be talking about a case. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may have not. But unfortunately, this isn't the first time we had a case like this. This is a 34-year-old Jacqueline Ma. She's an elementary school teacher. She's recently been charged with a plethora of, of charges regarding one of her students. Stephanie's going to dive into it tonight. It's unnerving. It's unnerving for anybody who has children out there who sends them to school, expecting them to get an education and come to find out you have things like this going on. And I wish, as I just said, this was like this isolated thing that has never happened before. But Stephanie and I were talking a couple seconds before we started recording and she was discussing a different case where this has happened. So it's unfortunate that we're here, but it's always important to discuss these types of issues because a lot of us have children out there and maybe there's things we can learn from this to try to prevent it from happening to our children in the future. Yeah, there's this obviously like this specific case, but I do think that this needs to be talked about in a broader context and and more universally because there is an issue here and, and we're going to get there. But let's talk about Jacqueline Ma. 34 years old. She was a sixth grade teacher at Lincoln Acres Elementary School in National City, California. She's obviously no longer a teacher there because she's been charged with 15 felony charges, including two counts of lewd acts with a child under the age of 14, seven counts of possession of child pornography, four counts of sexual exploitation of a child, and one count of dissuading a victim or witness. Now, I don't even know where to start, but um, basically she was first arrested on March 7th, this past March 7th, after a parent of her 13-year-old victim called the police suspecting that her son, the parent's son, was possibly having an inappropriate relationship with a former teacher. So Jacqueline was arrested the next day again. So she's arrested two days in a row and she was charged with sexual misconduct, witness intimidation, multiple counts of child pornography in connection to that same case and that same victim. And what it looks like happened is after she was arrested the first time, she tried to contact her victim, the child who was 13 years old again and basically kind of say like don't don't say anything like keep this between us it's a secret etc cetera, etc cetera. now a criminal defense lawyer gretchen von helms who's not associated with this case but she's just commenting on it she said quote when she was arrested the first time it was for the acts the lewd and lascivious acts on the child the second time when they arrested her they'd gone through her phone and determined there were more charges based on what they found in her phone and even before we go into her phone and what they found electronically there's a bunch of physical stuff they found First of all, they found a picture of her 13-year-old victim in her wallet, and she had jewelry, a bunch of jewelry that had her victim's initials on it. This is super weird to me because she's an almost 40-year-old woman, and her victim was a 13-year-old boy, her student, who, as we come to find, she started a sexual relationship with when he was just 12. Now, she's pleaded not guilty. I don't know why she would do that, but she's pleaded not guilty. She actually faces up to 29 years in prison if convicted of all charges. Now, I guess this happened in 2022, the same year that this woman, Jacqueline Ma, was awarded Teacher of the Year by the San Diego County Office of Education. She was actually beginning a sexual relationship with her student, like I said, who was 12 at the time. And what she would do is she would send him racy photos of herself, and then she asked him to take and send her videos of himself engaging in sexual acts. Now, the deputy district attorney, Drew Hart, said, quote, in these messages, the defendant was persistent in sending illicit photographs of herself to the victim and then soliciting the victim to do the same. She would persistently direct him to engage in sex acts while he was at home and video record them. The defendant maintained a relationship with this child for months, maybe even more than a year, when she began grooming him, giving him gifts, helping him with school, and praising him, end quote. And Deputy District Attorney Drew Hart describes Jacqueline Ma as being obsessive, possessive, controlling, and dangerous towards her victim. And love letters that the two exchanged during school hours, as well as texts that were exchanged between Jacqueline and her 13-year-old victim, 12-year-old victim at times, they show that, that she would become frustrated when the little boy didn't respond to her in a timely manner. Like if she sent him something or she asked for something and he didn't get right back to her or do what she asked, she would get like mad and kind of like bully him a little bit. 
And to do this, she used a special messaging application, which did not track prior messages. What I'm assuming is she used something that has like end-to-end encryption, which basically allows you to make sure that nobody sees your messages. Um, Facebook Messenger has a, a certain feature where you can have messages disappear after they're seen, things like that. Yeah, it could be just Snapchat too. Snapchat, yeah. You got Snapchat, you got Telegram, um, a bunch of different apps that can that are encrypted end to end and, and can do things like this, which, you know, are are helpful for some reasons if you're like an adult, a consenting adult, but if you are a pedophile, which is what she is, grooming a child and using these applications to send pictures and photos to him and asking for the same in return, not not so great of an app, right? Yeah, it's, inter- it's so interesting we're talking about this. It's not funny, but Tenley, today, and I didn't even look at this that the script yet to know that this was we're going to talk about tonight, but she had asked me today, hey, can I get Snapchat? Not be for the messaging app, but just because there are some like cool filters on there and stuff. And I looked at her and I was like, get some other filter, get another app. She's like, oh, my friends are on it. We all use it for the filters. I'm like, nope, nope not happening. And because Yo, she has why face- are the kids, the like young kids, because how old is she? She's now? 10. And Aiden's 11. And he just tried to get Snapchat like yep. a month ago. And I'm like, yeah, they're why using do you- it. Why are I think they all they're mostly it using again? it for the filters, but it just My a lot. ass they're using it for the filters, yeah. man. Well, I mean, either way, it's not happening. She was like a little disappointed. But I recently, if you remember my tangent from when we first started Crime Weekly, I had a tangent about Roblox. And I just, mm-hmm. now that I've learned more about it and I can see it and I, I, I feel like she's a little bit older and can understand what to do and what not to do. She has Roblox and she's been great on it. It's been a, she, she loves doing it, but I just got comfortable with Roblox. And then she hits me with Snapchat and I was like negative. She has, she has text messaging on her phone. Like she has an iPhone, but she Mm -hmm. also has Facebook messenger, which has filters as well. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's more than enough. You have multiple ways to communicate with people. And I have the ability to go back, not to spy on her, but if something comes up where other parents get together and it's like, Hey, something was said. I have an ability to go back and look and see if what they're alleging is true. Not that anything has happened, but it allows me to do that where something like Snapchat doesn't. So for those reasons, something it's like, like yeah. Facebook Messenger doesn't either. They got disappearing message function. It's easy they have to, to turn, turn that on. on, though. I think right, and I don't even. I don't think. To, I don't yeah. think Messenger Kids. You can do that. Messenger Facebook Messenger. You can. There's Messenger Kids. I can actually see her messages back and forth, who she's talking to from my own phone. So if you guys at home are looking for something, applications, try to keep them away from those applications where the app is designed for that purpose of deleting or once it's read, the message vanishes after that. Like, Stay away from those from now because it's only going to lead to bad things and you're better off sticking with the 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 couple apps that we discussed. And if, if you can, um, maybe even do like a, a text messaging app. So that way you can monitor it as well, because there's a log on the the provider side, whether it's AT&T or Verizon. Although I don't think it shows, you would know better than me. I don't think it shows the messages themselves. It just shows the call log of who's being messaged, what time and how many messages have been sent, right? Yeah. You'd have to go through like, for instance, Verizon, they have a My Verizon app. And, and you can get like details on those things if you if you want you can ask for them and things but uh yeah they don't they don't usually show the the content of the yeah, text the messages con- yeah. and the whole premise of Snapchat to begin with was that the whole fact of like you could send pictures yeah yeah, yeah. and then that person can see the picture but can't like save it and if they screenshot yep. it then You'll you know also it. know that and then you're like I'm not sending you any more pictures. Dude, because you screenshot the photos and what are you going to do with that? Like, that's the whole premise. It's an adult app. Children have no business being on it. And and the, because there's predators like this woman sitting on those apps waiting for for like a little 13-year-old boy to climb into her web. Yeah, not a fan of it. And, and you know, we're, we're talking about apps, but back to, the, to what we're actually discussing tonight. To me, it does sound like this person has, and this is an excuse by any ways, but has some mental issues as well, because it's not only is this a sexual thing that there's some form of gratification out of it, but for, from the from the sound of it, she's like in love with this kid. Right. And, we've seen, and we've seen this before too with women who aren't actually doing it for the, just the sex. Like they have feelings for these, these, these young students. Uh, and that's, that's scary. That's scary to think that these these men and women who are who are educators are falling in love with their 10, 11, 12 year old students. It's it's sick. It's they're really not a sick. Falling in love with them though. They're like fixating on them, right? They're like Well, they think like, they're in love. 
I mean, I'm, I'm not saying what it actually is, but they, they're, you said it, I'm just using your word, love letters to each other, you know, and, and then, the, and I don't fault I'm the sorry. student. It was not my words. It was the words from the article. Like I actually take a big issue with calling them love letters. That's part okay. of like the reason why I wanted to talk about this because like, if the, okay, Derek, if this was a man teacher, a male teacher, and it was a 12 or 13 year old female victim, would the press or the media have called them love letters? Would they? Nope. And I'll answer for you. Nope. I, I think as far as the context of whether it was a male teacher and female, I think it's covered differently in general. But I, I think like love letter to me, I don't look at it as deep as maybe you're looking at it, which you might be correct, but it's more like just a way of describing uh, a way of showing personal emotional feelings towards someone other than it being like, hey, take a picture of your of yourself naked. It's more like I care about you. I want to be with you. I hope we down the road can be with each other. And like it's a, a, prof a professing of an emotional feeling towards the other person love letters if you want to. I'm doing air quotes if you're watching on YouTube, which you should be because we're only on YouTube But uh, <laughs> for this for this portion of it. But I will say, yeah, it seems like there's something more to it. And there, there have been previous cases where we've seen this where the woman is, the, I can't remember the name of her, the teacher, which doesn't really matter, but she was like married, had, I don't know if she had kids or not, but she was like married with a husband and she was professing her love Yo, to her. are you like messing with me right now? Because I just told you about this and you said you never heard about it. There's been like 30 of these cases, Stephanie. You didn't mention her name. I don't know which one you're talking about. Maybe it's the same one, but there's been multiple cases. If you just look it up of female teachers, I'm just, we're just talking about female no, teachers. I mean... Yeah, I guess. But yeah. like, isn't that an issue? Like, what is like, of course it's okay, an issue. so who I think you're talking about and who I'm talking about to me, because this happened when I was in high school. And yeah, I was you like, said this girl was pregnant, though, right? Like after man, Mary Kay Letourneau. Okay, That's Mary Kay Letourneau. About. Is she no? blonde? There's another. Yeah, she's blonde. Oh, no, there's, there's another blonde one. You're right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just and, thinking, she's like blonde. They're both blonde, but Mary Kay Letourneau is like more of a honey blonde and the other blonde is more like of an icy blonde. I remember, I, I see their faces. And there's been more than that. So the, the point of the story is there's a, there's these women and men who end up developing in their mind, in their mind, let me preface that, feelings or what they perceive as feelings. And there's obviously some issues there mentally. And it's scary because as you mentioned, this happened, she got caught. And yet she was still reaching out to the little boy to talk to him more, mostly for self-serving reasons to try to protect herself because she knew what was coming, but still risking it all, reaching out to him. And I, I'm glad you, you know, use the word grooming in there because it does sound like some of this was being reciprocated by the student. I don't think anybody in their right mind would take that and say, oh, well, you know, this is what he did. He's obviously under the, he's a minor, but more importantly, he was being groomed by an authority figure in his life to to make him believe that's okay and that's because he was being told this by someone who he's been taught through his parents that he should trust and that's mm -hmm. someone who he should look up to and so when she's doing it to him in his mind he feels it's okay to reciprocate that so yeah absolutely a situation not, where probably he's being not groomed. at first you know probably like listen to this they said at one point when the child was 12 years old, she got him in a position where he was alone in her classroom and then she started making advances. The victim did not know what to do and reported that it felt surreal. He has no freaking idea what to do at this point. It's a process of like getting close to him and making him feel comfortable and making him feel like this is okay, which is what she did, right? It's like a manipulation. It's weird. Yeah. No, and I this mean- This is an and educated woman, like- yeah, well, we all know education doesn't mean much. We've had serial killers who are like geniuses, you know, and like they've had like PhDs and, it, you know, education, I think, is overrated for the most part. There's some sick people who are college students and PhD graduates and all that good stuff. But for sure. But when you think about stuff like this, right? Yeah. Well, who, who who's the person you think about? You don't think about somebody who's got a master's degree in education, who's married. OK, because she's married and she's walking around her neighborhood with her golden retrievers and her husband and everybody thinks that they're the perfect family. And then she's doing this behind the scenes like that's not the person you think about. No, right? that's why these stories are polarizing, because it, it looks like on the exterior that it's this like perfect little white picket fence family. But behind closed doors, a lot of these families have their own issues and maybe not to this extent, but stuff going on. But I definitely, and this is not an excuse, think there's probably something as they dive into this 
and she starts to maybe speak to someone when she's in prison, they'll realize that she's going to be diagnosed with certain disorders that have that have made her believe that these types of things are okay because it doesn't sound like this was just something for sexual gratification see i don't know if she thought it was okay wouldn't she have been more like open about it she's no. very secretive she's very hidden why well, you she don't knows think it's, it's wrong. okay oh she knows it's wrong but she thinks it's okay okay in the sense where she's in love with this child this child and so she feels because like because she's in love she justifies everything she else. justifies it but i would like to think because she's using these you know, apps that we talked about, I would like to think that at 29 years old or 34 years old, did you say 34 years old when Her, she started? I don't know. I would Too like to old think, enough to know better, man. Yeah. yeah I would like to think that because she's using these, these measures to communicate with him that on the surface, she knows it's wrong, but in her mind, she's looking at it as you can't help who you love, you know? So she's going to, she's going to go through with it. And obviously that's the wrong mentality. Um, as far as what we can do as parents, I mean, it's tough because, you know, we all, a lot of us work and we have, we send our children off to school to get an education. And this is an extreme circumstance. Obviously, this isn't like this thing that's happening in every school system throughout the country, but it does of. happen. Yeah. Not that we know of, but it does happen. And it's something where, you know, you always want to talk to your kids. I always take the time to have conversations with my children when they get home, discuss certain things. I had a recent incident where my children go to aftercare. And there was something going on with another student because there's different uh, different grades at this aftercare. It's like first all the way to like six. So you obviously run into some issues there where you have kids of different age uh, ages and different mental states. And I have Peyton who's there. She's in first grade. And then you have Tenley who's in fourth. Well, they were having this issue with a third grader. Peyton was having this issue with the third grader. And so Tenley stepped in and there are obviously it's a he, as she said, she said, right? My kids are saying that they she's picking on Peyton and this girl's telling her mom that Peyton's picking on her. And so I won't even get into the specifics of it, but long story short, there were conversations happening with these people who were supposed to be watching them. And when you start to talk to the kids individually, the one thing that we found on both sides of it is that all three children were having different conversations with the supervisor. And that's the why it's important to talk to them because that supervisor wasn't clear and what she wanted to happen amongst the kids to try to be the adult and, and, and diffuse the situation as opposed to just kind of pushing it off. So it wasn't like this extreme circumstance, but once we got to that and we identified a common theme that we wanted all three children to be aware of and to abide by, no more issues. So it's important always to have conversations with your kid on a daily basis, even if they don't seem off to you, just to kind of pick their brains so that if something does happen, you can kind of maybe prevent it from before it gets too far. Not saying the parents did anything wrong here, but if they're having conversations with their son, maybe there's something in the early stages of this that he might say, oh, you know, our teacher Stephanie, she's so nice. She's so nice to her students. She allows us to do like this messenger app so we can talk to them, talk to her after school about our homework because that may be how it starts, right? And it may be just something that he doesn't know is a problem. But if he says, yeah, we're all using Snapchat and Miss Stephanie's on there as well. Well, what are you going to say at that point? You're going to say, wait, wait, wait. I'm you're gonna say using Miss Stephanie's about to get her ass kicked is what I'm going to say. Exactly. Exactly. So something that starts off innocent just by you paying attention and listening to your kids, there may be something early that you catch and it may be nothing, but it's a, it's a point where you can address it to prevent it from getting to this point. So that, and there's no perfect system. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with how the parents handled this. They obviously, when they caught on to it, they addressed it and kudos to them. Um, but just, just be cognizant out there. You never know. Uh, as you said, Stephanie, people, edu whether you have a high education, whether you have a lot of money, whether you have a family, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I have personally dealt with uh, child molesters who on the surface to the exterior, you know, you would think they're just a normal person next door. Then you look at the sex offender registry and you realize they're past. So it's always important to be aware of your surroundings and who your children are with uh, when they're not with you. And that includes teachers. Dude, I completely agree. And it drives me crazy. My husband always like the, the other day I come home and Bella's like at the neighbor's house with like this little girl and her dad. And I'm like, well, who is he? Like, do we even know him? She's six. Like, I don't know yep. this dude. He's like, oh, he lives across the street. And I'm like, and? And he's like, oh, right. <laughs> he, he's a nice guy. And I'm like, do you even know anything about him? And he's like, oh, he's right. complete. He looks completely normal. He's like saying all this stuff. And I keep like responding with like, you don't know him and he's getting like agitated with me because I think on some level like he knows I'm right, but he doesn't like to think too deeply about this stuff. But like 
You have to. You have to. And you have to be suspicious of everybody. And it drives me crazy when you're just like, yeah, go across the street. Don't know that dude. And it's like, why am I the only one here who's <laughs> aware of like the dangers out there? I don't know that freaking guy. All right. I don't know him, but I know I'll kill him if he touches my kid. But I do want to <laughs> I do want to talk about like this. This double standard is bothering me because I, I do want to call it out when I see it. You saw it with Mary Kay Letourneau, who for me is like the biggest case, because once again, that was happening when I was kind of coming of age and I was watching the news and stuff. And we all thought it was crazy. She pleaded guilty in 1997 to two counts of felony second degree rape of a child. She had a sexual relationship with her 13 year old student. OK, and then they got married in 2005 after she served a seven year prison sentence. They had two children together before he turned 15. She was pregnant with his children twice before he turned 15. OK, she, they had their first child in 1997 while she was awaiting her sentence. <laughs> and after three months of getting a reduced sentence in prison, like she got a reduced sentence. They gave her a slap on the wrist. She got out. And they were like, all you got to do is stay away from this kid. What did she do? She defied court orders. She went back to him, slept with him again, which led her uh, to being sentenced to seven years in prison. And then all of a sudden, what what happened? Oh, she's pregnant <laughs> while she's in prison with this kid's baby, this baby's baby. And listen, I'm glad it's a different time. Like it's 2023. Because they really did the press and the media romanticize this relationship. I remember the cover of People magazine with Mary Kay Letourneau on it and her daughter, her their first child together. And the, the, the headline was like, the teacher and the sixth grader, their bizarre story of obsessive love. Like, what the hell would you why would you ever say that this little boy who has no control over like what's going on? His emotions are going crazy. His hormones are going crazy. He was manipulated by a trusted adult. Don't call that a love story. That's not a love story. And they all wanted to convince us that this was some like star-crossed lovers thing. Like that was the narrative. And there was a double standard then. And, and there still is a little bit today because nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about Jacqueline Ma. And I guarantee you if this was a man teacher and it was a little 12, 13-year-old girl, it'd be all over, man. They'd be tweeting about it. Oh, hashtag men suck, hashtag kill all men, blah, blah, blah. But like a woman does it and we're, and you kind of did it too. You're like, well, there's got to be something wrong with her. Yeah, no shit. There's something wrong with oh, her. I would say and, real quick, there's same thing wrong for men as well. Like, I mean, yeah, if a, but if a no man shit, there, in love with his student, yeah, he's clearly got Clearly some something wrong with her. If a man did it and fell in love, we wouldn't be like, there's something wrong with him. We'd be like freaking electric chair, honestly, right? And according to a 2013 study, female sexual predators in student teacher cases face far less punitive sentences than male sexual predators. And judges have historically made justifications for these lax sentences. Um, like I remember one case, I think it was the one you were talking about with that blonde woman. He was like, oh, well, clearly like she's an immature woman and he's a mature child. Therefore, it's not as bad. Yeah. And it sucks because men are expected to be like tough and grown up far before their time and mature far before their time. But we we protect, you know, female children, but we don't protect male children as much. And that's an issue for me. That's an issue for me. And I really hope society takes a turn. And people are talking about Jacqueline Ma because she deserves to be talked about right up there with all the other predators because she is a predator and she needs to go away for life because Mingya, she can't even stay away from this kid. You know, she gets arrested the next day. She's she's like reaching out to him. She can't stay away from him. She's crazy. There's definitely a societal perceptional difference over that. I don't know if perceptional is a word. Probably not. Perceptual. Yeah. Perceptual. We'll go with that one. But you even see on social media where when you have these cases, when they're discussing the student and it's a boy, it's more like at a boy. Oh, he's starting yeah. young. Yeah. Or look at him. He's going out for his first beers with dad. And obviously you don't see any of those comments. When it's a female student, it's like what you just said, like, hey, where's the beat party? Where where are we taking this guy? Where yeah. Where's the alley that we're going to? Like, yeah. it's a completely different perspective as far as how society views it. And I don't know if that's going to change. I feel like there's just the big bad man with this little girl. And and I, I got to tell you, not to just be that person, but I, I guess I'm guilty of that as well. Because I mm -hmm. kind of, if you were to have reversed this story and told me that this was a guy teacher with this little girl, I... As a father of two daughters, you know, I think I maybe I wouldn't have said initially, even though it's the truth, I still believe it for both. Maybe I'm not my first reaction isn't, oh, you know, but there's got to be something wrong there. More, it's more yeah. like, 
yeah, ex- if this is proven that you, then that, like you said, electric chair. So I guess I'm guilty of it as well as we're programmed to feel that way. And I guess that's, discussing that's it. That's society. The, and yeah. it's a problem because women have a problem with men and that they're toxic and that they're like so aggressive and this, this and that. But we don't nurture our male children to make them, you know, grow up to be more like gentle and nurturing and things like that. We just throw them to the wolves and say, oh, your teacher raped you? That a boy. It's crazy to me. It's crazy because I have an 11 year old son and he's a baby still like a baby. You know, he acts tough and he acts like he's grown up. But at night when I'm tucking him into bed, he's a little baby in my arms. And there's no way that that kid is ready to make any decisions sexually. No way. And I'm telling you, if this woman had done this to my kid, well, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. Okay? It'd be Crime Weekly featuring Derek Lavasser. Yeah, it would be a time to kill with Morgan Freeman, okay? And I would loud and proud like, yeah, I did it. Fuck around and find out. I did it. Uh, we'd cover it. We'd cover it for you. Be good. Get, get some good views. I wouldn't apologize. I wouldn't feel sorry. Not even a little bit. I don't care if it's a man or a woman. You mess with kids or animals, you're on you're on my hit list, you know? <laughs> agreed. Agreed. And and I think uh, overall, you we said a lot. Want to hear your guys' comments on it way down below. What do you think about this? What do you think about this case? Are there any things that you think that we can do as parents to better protect our children? Is it conversations? Is it having more meetings with the teachers? What do you guys think? Way down in the comments below. And then obviously, Stephanie just had some stuff to say as far as society, how we view things. Do you agree with her? Do you disagree with her? This is where we have some a cordial discourse in the comments to hear what you guys have to say. That helps us understand where you guys are coming from, understands our audience. Uh, any final words, Stephanie Harlow? I said everything I need to say. Said everything you need to say. I love your sweatshirt, by the way, Criminal Coffee. For everybody who's pre-ordered the sweatshirts or t-shirts or mugs or hats, you should have it by now. It's either on its way or already at your door. And going forward, there will be no delay. We have plenty in stock. If you're following us on social media, it's at Drink Criminal Coffee. And then obviously Crime Weekly is at Crime Weekly Pod. Check us out. Follow us. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you have notifications on. That's how you know when we post. When we post, we appreciate you guys being here. Stay safe out there. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.